Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I am filming in a very unusual place. Uh, I am in my laundry room slash pantry and I just wanted to talk to you today and share a little bit about some storage options that I have uh, come up with. Now, one of the things that I did when we first bought our property was I came in here to the laundry room because the washer and dryer are on the wall behind the camera here, opposite of this wall. And uh, this door that's over here, right there, goes out into the kitchen. So all of this extra space that was in here, to me, was just the perfect place uh, to create storage for the kitchen. So one of the very first things that I did when we moved in here was I built some quick shelving that went on this wall right here. And then over on this wall, I just put some, uh, that plastic kind of click together, a cheap shelving that you would get from like say Lowe's or Home Depot. And let me sit down here before my feet go to sleep. Oh, I can't kneel like that. All right. so. I had the plastic shelving and I had the shelving that I had built back here. Now the shelving that I had put in, it was fine. I mean, it stored a bunch of stuff, but the shelves were really far apart, which meant you had all sorts of stuff on the shelves, but then you would have a lot of dead space above those items, space that wasn't being used for anything. So a couple months ago now, I think it was, uh, maybe just a few weeks ago, it's been a crazy 2020. I came in here and I completely redid the shelving that I had built here on the wall. I pulled every bit of it out. And then what I did was I measured my jars. I measured the pint jars. I measured the quart jars. And I looked to see, okay, what is the ideal distance between shelves so that I can fit either pint jars or quart jars on the shelves without having a bunch of dead space above them. I left about an inch or so between the bottom of the shelf and the tops of the jars and that has just worked out perfect. It allowed me to add two more shelves to this wall over here. Um, I came through, not only did I add more shelving, but I actually reinforced these shelves. I made them a little bit stronger. Uh, previously, they were just made out of the, um, the particle board. I didn't have any supports under the front. And so I've added two by twos and that just, it makes it feel a little bit more solid. Uh, even though those shelves had been there for about four years, there wasn't really any bending, there wasn't any bowing, but it just makes me feel better knowing that they are supported uh, even more than they were before. Hi, Ava Jane. You coming to, to join in on the conversation? So that was one of the things that I did. Now, this bottom shelf sits up a bit high off the ground and I did that so that I have the ability to fit my big buckets under here. These buckets are filled with, let's see, I've got rice, I've got sucanat, which sucanat is basically an unprocessed dehydrated sugar. I've got wheat, uh, I've got salt, I've got uh, regular sugar, and then over on this side, I've got more shelving, but I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so the other project that I did, which was about the same time I did this one, it might have even been the same day, I don't remember, same weekend or something like that, was right here inside the door, I created a can rack for holding your classic grocery store canned goods. Now, when I did the original one, I followed plans that I found on the internet on a very well-known construction sort of DIY website. And as we were putting it together, you know, I followed the instructions to a T. But I had concerns about the wood that it said to use. And it's kind of one of those trust your gut situations 
because we put it together, we installed it on the wall, it looked great, we filled it up, and I think it was the very next day it started coming apart. The wood that they said to use just was not strong enough to hold the weight of the cans. The spaces that they told you to put in between uh, the rows to hold the cans was too wide. And what was happening is the cans would get all cockeyed in there because there was too much space. And so we ended up pulling the whole thing out and I wanted the can rack. I love the idea of the can rack, but I wanted it to be a little more durable. And so we happened to have a whole bunch of two by fours on hand already. And so that's what I did. So we came in and did the entire frame, the, div the dividing pieces, the top, the bottom, the sides, all out of two by fours and it has worked so much better. Uh, it's nice and sturdy. Now this front piece here is made out of one by four and it is screwed in top, middle and bottom. This end piece, it didn't need to be quite as wide. So this one is like a one by three. Uh, I mean, I put it on flush with the end that way it's not sticking out. And then one of the biggest differences between this one and the original was the original had you put the bottom piece on at an angle kind of tilted back to keep the cans from rolling out in theory i i guess that works okay here's the problem those cans are under the weight of all the cans above it now if you've got if you've got only a few cans if it's a tiny little rack that might, that might work fine mine's four feet tall and so there's a lot of weight on those cans and so in order to be able to get your hand in there grab that can and pull it out there was just a lot of force so what I did instead was I created a ledge now ideally I think I would have maybe made the bottom of this with a 2x6 uh, but I didn't have any 2x6s I had 2x4s well come on Ava Jane I hear you out there <laughs> yes I know and so I made the whole frame out of the two by fours and then to make the ledge, I just took a piece of one by two and then two by three and I kind of just screwed them all in to the bottom and made a lip where the cans could come forward and be sticking out where I can easily grab a hold of the can. The other thing that I did was I took wedges of wood just little triangles that I cut out of some scraps and I fastened them at the back of the bottom of the stack which forces the cans to roll forward so they're not going to be up against the back of the frame getting jammed under the other cans and it worked out beautifully so this scenario that I have here this design using the 2x4s using the screws and the, and the sturdier pieces of wood has worked out great. We've been using it ever since. I haven't had any issues at all. All right, so then that brings me to my two newest projects. So I decided that it was time to get rid of the plastic shelving and to kind of replicate what I had done on this wall onto this wall. And so that is what I did. I created another shelving unit. Um, this one is about three feet wide or so, I made it the same dimensions of the plastic unit that I had in here. Because again, my washer and dryer are in here, I need to make sure there's plenty of room for me to get in there, I'm not instead of having to like cram in front of the washer. So I made it the same size as the plastic shelving. However, it is nice and sturdy, it's made out of wood, and there's more shelving, which means as it gets filled with the items that I'm going to be storing in here, you're not gonna have a bunch of dead space that's being wasted. Now over on this side, just like the, the shelving on that wall, I made the bottom shelf nice and tall, high up off the ground, giving me plenty of room to slide buckets up underneath there. So I've got buckets, I've got vinegar, I have all sorts of things tucked up underneath there, out of the way, which gives me plenty of room to walk through here and be able to do what I need to do. The bottom shelf right here, I'm using to store my 
some of my canning supplies, my lids, and well, lids. <laughs> I've got my reusable lids here, uh, regular size, wide mouth size. I've got my metal lids over there. Uh, these are extra rings. Uh, I'm actually giving these to a friend, so that's why they're sitting here in these containers. Uh, that's my internet router back there. Our laundry is also the internet hub, and so that kind of sits there. So back there on the wall, I have my rings, all of the rings, more than enough rings to do any canning, uh, canning day that I could possibly want to do. Wide mouth uh, and regular mouth rings uh, for the canning. All of these wood shelving units that I have put in, this one back here behind me and the one over on this wall, were put together with two by threes screwed into the wall, horizontal boards, um, screwed into studs so that they are nice and sturdy. The front is two by four legs with two by twos underneath as supports for the shelves. The shelves are all um, nice three quarter inch particle board and everything's screwed together. There's no nails other than the one that's holding up my strings full of canning lids. So everything is, is nice and sturdy and I'm very happy with how it turned out. So that brings me to this. This is another one of those super easy, throw it together in no time kinds of projects. I had some space between the corner and this shelving unit and this is where the door opens up. You know, that's dead space. There's, there's not really anything that can happen on that wall right there. And so by creating this, essentially a ladder out of two by fours, I made some sh shallow shelves that can go all the way up to the ceiling and store all sorts of stuff, mostly cleaning products in my situation. I've got my bleach down here, my cleaning vinegar, I've got my borax, my laundry soaps, all of this stuff. And it's just, it's out of the way. It's not taking up cabinets and this is space that would not have been utilized otherwise. This whole project probably took an hour total to do. I measured the space, cut the wood, screwed them all together, slid it in here, and then to make sure it didn't fall over, I have two L brackets up there that are screwed into studs. And so this will stand sturdy and do the job. Hello, Miss Ava Jane. She is the most lovey-dovey cat in the world. If she can get to you, she is going to be all over you. Huh, baby? <laughs> now, before I put the shelving in here, I had a bracket hung on the wall that holds uh, brooms and all of that. And so I took that off the wall. I put the shelving unit in place. I just went ahead and I hung that bracket right back up on the front of the shelving unit. And again, I have my broom and my Swiffer and all of that hanging right there. It's out of the way, but I can still get to everything that I need to. So I didn't really lose anything by hanging that there and everything is tidy. Everything is organized and I've got storage. This is something you could do pretty much behind any sort of door, any door that opens up into a wall, that is a space that you could use for something like this. And of course, if you were doing it someplace else, you could maybe make it look pretty, you could paint it and, and all of that. But in my, in my situation, this is in the laundry room. This is my walk-in pantry storage sort of area. And would I love everything to be painted and pretty? Sure. But I am very much about practicality over prettiness, except for my kitchen. I do like my kitchen to look pretty, but when it comes to everything else, I'm all about practical purpose, practical cost, and it being effective and all of that. So I hope this maybe gives you some ideas. If you are challenged when it comes to storage in your home, maybe this will inspire you to come up with some ways that you could store things uh, in ways that maybe you hadn't thought of. 
So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. So thanks for joining me here in the laundry room slash pantry with Miss Ava. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread and I'll talk to y'all next time. Have a baby.